Hello, my awesome and amazing Sagittariuses. It's Mel with Blue Scorpion Tarot here to bring you another general collective reading. If you are a Sagittarius born on November 26th, this is a special bonus reading for you. Happy birthday to all of my Sagittariuses that are born on November 26th from a few weeks ago. I sincerely hope your day was very magical and that you had <clears throat> an opportunity to go out and do something and maybe hopefully uh, be able to take the day off of work. So again, sincerely hope your day was fabulous. Calling upon the trusted ancestors of my Sagittarius viewers and subscribers to bring in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Through the power of the numbers, and so it is. Now let's see here. <clears throat> Got the power of number five. Power of number two. And power of number nine. Okay, so it looks like, let's see. Nine and five is uh, 14 plus the two. That brings us to the number 16. 16 in tarot is the tower card. It could either be that you have recently gone through a tower moment or you've been going through a tower moment. Or a tower moment can also talk about a breakthrough. Okay. Some of you could be dealing with a Taurus or a Gemini born in the month of May. You could also be dealing with an Aquarius or a Pisces born in the month of February. You could also be dealing with a Virgo or a Libra born in the month of September. You could also be dealing with a Gemini or a Cancer born in the month of June. And possibly you could be dealing with a Capricorn or an Aquarius born in the month of January, again, for some of you. We could possibly see the magician, the high priestess, the hierophant, the lovers, the hermit, the hanged man card, the devil card, along with the tower card, and possibly maybe the sun card. So some of you could be dealing, again, I've got strong Capricorn energy coming in through the number 15, strong Pisces energy coming in through the number 12. Strong Leo energy through the number 19, and some of you could be dealing with a Scorpio or an Aries more specifically um, because the Tower card represents Scorpio and Aries. So anyway, okay, going to the power of number 16 for my Sagittarius's born on November 26th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. <clears throat> I gotta clear my throat, you guys. <clears throat> okay. Trusted ancestors of my Sagittarius is born on November 26th. What is the overall general collective energy, please? What does Sagittarius need to know at this time frame? Show me what's up. Ah, the Prince of Pentacles. This is like the Knight of Pentacles. Something is slowly moving in your direction right now, Sag, or there's an offer coming in from someone in particular. This can also talk about a job situation, possibly a new job opportunity. And or this could talk about a new soulmate that's coming in your direction that's going to be more steadfast and true, okay? Somebody who's a little bit more solid uh, or who will be more solid, maybe more professional also too in your life. And this can even talk about a business partner in the near future for you as well, especially maybe if you are an entrepreneur, Trusted ancestors of my Sagittarius is born on November 26th. What is this offer coming in in Sag's direction, please? The Four of Swords, maybe to take a little R&R, &R, a restful vacation, maybe to get away for a few days. 
um, just to go decompress, rejuvenate. Um, you couldn't meet it right now, Sag. Um, I know with the holidays, everything gets a little, you know, gets a little jam packed and, you know, obligations and things like this, where you could just feel like you're being pulled in numerous different directions, but you have to keep remembering to take time out for yourself. So either you might be going somewhere with a very close friend, maybe it's a trusted family member. Um, this can even happen possibly maybe after the holidays because we have Taurus Virgo Capricorn energy. So our next earth sign season is obviously Capricorn. So maybe taking about a three or four day little vacation. Um, maybe you have some paid time holiday uh, hours built up at the company that you work for and you haven't exactly um, taken that time off this year. So maybe, um, maybe a little spa getaway or maybe a little bed and breakfast or go discover something. Maybe a place that you've always wanted to go to. Either way, I think it's about... Uh, decompressing but somebody here there could have also been a passing of a loved one there could also be inheritance money coming in your direction for some of you okay let's go into the kipper deck some of you could be dealing again with another earth sign towards Virgo Capricorn I also have Aquarius Libra Gemini energy coming in through the four of swords Trusted Ancestor, show me more about this offer coming in towards Sag, please. Mm -hmm. Coffin. Rest. A rebirth. Somebody may want to revitalize a connection with you. If there was an ending between you and a specific person, a connection, now they want to come back and rejuvenate the connection. Again, like I said, some of you could have, you know, recently lost a loved one. Um... Again, there could be inheritance money coming in your direction. Imprisonment, yeah, could be feeling stressed out. A lot of times with this imprisonment card from the Kipper deck, I view it sometimes as the Eight of Swords, um, where you could feel just really stuck or trapped in your thoughts and, you know, just needing to get away, you know, needing to get away. And um, there could have also been a situation where maybe, uh, a family member was trying to mess around with some money of yours or um, messing around with inheritance money. I know it seems a little dramatic, but I'm hearing it. I'm seeing it in the cards. So, But I think as an individual, you're needing a break. You could feel like you're on this vicious cycle where you're working all the time because obviously we have a coin card. So you feel like you can be, you know, like a prisoner uh, a prisoner at your own job, you know what I mean? Where you just feel stuck all the time. And right now you could just be needing some rejuvenation and get off of the vicious cycle. Okay. It could be that you're putting other people's needs first, Sag. Okay. <clears throat> and not thinking about your own. Maybe you're not even taking care of your own health right now. Um, your mental health is very important. That's why, you know, with the four of swords, rest and relaxation. This can also talk about setting boundaries, you know, setting boundaries with people and, and setting boundaries with people is so difficult, you know, because it's like, we don't want to come off as being mean or snarky or anything like this, but there are ways to say what you need to say in order to get what you want you know, so that things are peaceful. However, I do feel that there is a specific person that you're dealing with that they may make you feel stuck or trapped at times because you don't know which way is up or down or what it is that they want from the connection. They may be the type of person that comes in and then stops the connection, comes in and stops the connection. So a lot of inconsistency and maybe this is really weighing or dragging your energy down. So if this is a person who is in and out all the time and it's really weighing on your heartstrings, you're going to have to say something and be very truthful and honest, you know, especially if they keep trying to come back, revitalize the connection and love bomb you and all this, be very careful. You know, you could be also dealing with somebody who has 
narcissistic personality disorder or have certain uh, behaviors that are not healthy, that are weighing on your bodily energy. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, people have a hard time navigating through their intuition. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The first way to trust your intuition is to feel your way through your body, okay? When you're thinking of a specific person and or a possible situation, does something make you feel off? Does your body get tense? Do you feel kind of claustrophobic or all of a sudden you start getting these ruminating thoughts? Okay, what is your body doing? Do you feel tight? Do you feel light? Do you feel tense? Do you feel good? That's how you will know the first indication that your your intuition is kicking in like light speed, okay? So if this is a person who keeps coming in and out of your life, this is the time to set boundaries and realize also too, you might have two choices. Either you set your boundaries and say, hey, look, you can't keep coming back in and out of my life whenever you want. This is not a healthy situation. I know what I need in a relationship and what I am visually seeing here and observing is, I'm sorry, it is not for me. It's not for me. If you feel compelled to say something like that, you know, or this person wants to come in, <clears throat> revitalize the connection. Don't take him back right away. You need to ask the appropriate questions. If you're stumped on what to say to somebody, you know, when they try to come back, revitalize the connection and all of a sudden that, you know, like they're so in love with you and yet they just keep leaving you in a state of confusion. You can go to the channel, The Art of Love. The host name is Lucia. I do not know her personally, but she has a video, What to Say When the Ex Returns. And it can be, these six questions can also be utilized even if this person is not your ex, but could also be a potential suitor, okay? I find the video highly valuable because a lot of times when somebody comes back in and we know how we have felt about them. Sometimes we go into like a fight or flight or freeze mode where it's like the emotions start to override us and then we can end up saying the wrong thing and then our emotions get out of whack and whatever. And also too, be very conscientious. We are in a mercury retrograde right now. So, you know, there can be a lot of mixed signals during a retrograde. It's better just to kind of stay silent. Okay. And, um, you know, if somebody's trying to come in and love bomb you during the Mercury retrograde and they may not know it's the Mercury retrograde, but you may be aware of it and I'm telling you about it. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you may want to wait until after the Mercury retrograde is over with around January 2nd of 2024 before you would respond back to this person. Don't feel compelled or feel guilty to reach out to this person if they've been in and out of your life just to show that you are a good person and wish them a Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or whatever the case may be, right? Don't even go there. I feel like this person needs to apologize to you. So if that's what you're trying to do, manifesting uh, for an apology, um, from your specific person, they have tons of guided meditations, but whatever the case may be, if you are in fact feeling stretched in numerous different directions, you need some time out for yourself, Sag, and make this on your priority list. You need that time. You need to regroup your thoughts, okay? So we're going to go into the Hidden Truth Oracle. Trusted ancestors of my Sagittarius is born on November 26th. For those Sagis that are dealing with a specific person on a romantic level, what does this person want to say to Sag, please? I feel you leaving me behind. That could have been at one point in time. Or you could be moving on right now, Sag, and maybe you did find somebody new. And this person could be feeling the energetic pull, and that's the reason why they're trying to come in come in and maybe you feel that they're disrupting your peace, your peace of mind. 
You do not need to respond to them. If you've already moved on and you're feeling good about a new person that's in your life right now, and this new person is treating you well, and this person tries to come in and revitalize the connection, listen, they may have to live with that. They may have to live with the lost opportunity. That's on them. Because if you're in your true joy, your true bliss, you know, why... Why do you want your peace disrupted? Something to think about. What else does this person want to say to Sag? I look for you everywhere. So right now, they could also be trapped in their thoughts. They can also be dreaming about you. Maybe everywhere they go, they see your name or maybe they hear a certain song or whatever the case may be. But the bottom line is, this person, in fact, is not entirely bringing exactly the, the kind of commitment that you need. Okay, we're still going to do a little bit more clarification, but I feel like there could be, or you are, I should say, in maybe in some observation mode with this person and how they've treated you and look, taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, looking at the bigger picture of this person. Let's go into the Romance Angels deck. Because I feel like they need to, this person needs to prove more to you, Sag. Show me some more romantic feelings from this person that Sag knows. What's going on here? Yeah, I told you. Retreat. So this person may want to ask you to go somewhere to, you know, decompress. Or like I said, if it's a friend, uh, a friend that wants to go do something fun, you should go do it. Okay. Especially if you can take the time off. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. It says... It's time to disconnect from the world and maybe to shut your phone off for a few days, Sag, you know, shutting your phone off just to, you know, clear your mind or this person may want to clear the air with you, but they still need to bring you in. See, they may still have some codependency issues. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. This person could have had literally an addiction. Or they could have an, an anxious, um, whoop, there goes my glasses, an anxious attachment style. Or maybe at one point in time, you had an anxious attachment style onto this person. You know, um, especially, you know, if they left you behind, they, they left you out in the dark. And you know what I mean? Just ghosted you, rejected you, whatever. But I don't know. See, you got to be careful with this. If this person in truth is not fully healed, they're not going to be good for the connection. And if your emotions are not regulated enough and your emotions start to override you, the last thing that the two of you want to do is to get into an argument. You do not need your stress levels increasing right now. No, spirit saying you need to go decompress because you owe it to your mental health and you owe it to your body and whatever this person has put you through or if it's a friend, a family member, whatever the case may be, you need some time out for yourself. You need to go figure out who you are as a person. You need to figure out what your purpose is or figuring out what, how are you going to make January of 2024 your best month and from that point forward, moving forward. Because again, you know, if you're caught in this cycle or the trap of being the people pleaser all the time, just saying, this person from your past, as far as on a romantic level, I, I don't, I don't feel like they're entirely bringing the whole enchilada. Okay. If you allow them back into your life, you're going to have to ask them, say, why now? You need some kind of realistic answer. Saying, them saying, well, but I love you. That's not enough. That's not enough. Because you have to ask them, well, why do you love me? Because you seem so happy over there. What happened? And if they say, well, you know, it just wasn't working out and blah, blah, blah. And, and you could be like, are you sure? Are you really sure about that? Are you sure things were not working out? 
And then to say, no, I said, oh, you sure you're not dealing with that person? You know what I mean? They, they have to prove something. And if it looks like they're still giving you wishy-washy answers, you guys, they may try to come in and be strong. It could be because if they think that they're losing you, I feel you leaving me behind, you know, that's the sad part. You don't know what you got until it's gone. You know what I mean? So this person could end up ending a third party, a third party that you know about, and then try to come in, revitalize the connection with you. But here you've been trying to probably heal and ground your energy, trying to get back into your peace of mind, peace of heart. And then they come in. And if you are not fully recovered from the breakup, from healing, your energy is not going to be any good either for the connection. Because your emotions are going to override you. And, you know, I know how Saggies are. I've, I'm your sister Scorpio, but I've got four places to Sag in my birth chart. And they're in some of the, <laughs> not to say that all, all the planets are not powerful and strong, but I have more of the hard Sag and the hardcore planetary alignments. Okay. So, you know, I know what it feels like to get fired up, you know, and Sagis, we have, you know, we have some soft sides to us. We have a soft spot. You know what I mean? But it's very difficult to be diplomatic when you're pissed off. So if you feel like you're going to go into an argument with this person, don't even go there, Sag. Restrain yourself, okay? Hold yourself back. Take a deep breath in. And... Think about what in truth you want to say because if this person also had some kind of an addiction and they're not fully recovered, fully healed, you do not want to go back on that vicious cycle. So right now, it's it's time to decompress. It's time to get back into you. Get your energy levels back up and running. Stop being a people pleaser, setting your healthy boundaries, etc. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, Sag, and do it through the power of the numbers, you can hit me up at bluescorpiongifts at gmail.com, and my amazing assistant, Victoria, will book you for that personal reading. But until next time, take care.